Welcome to Season 4 of Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. This podcast is not just information, but impartation and activation. We believe that every conversation will encourage, equip, and empower you to live the daily supernatural life. Subscribe to this podcast and then share every episode with your friends and family and be activated. And welcome to another adventure in the Holy Spirit. I'm your host, Jared Lasky. I want to encourage you guys, if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify, you could click the link on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a free download available for you. We are all about the Holy Spirit and empowering and equipping people to draw near to Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and to do what Jesus did for the glory of God. Guys, I'm so excited for today's very special episode. I've I'm bringing Malachi Talabi back. I've had him on this podcast before. So if you haven't gotten acquainted with him and his ministry, you could go back to that episode on speaking in tongues. And today we're talking to, with Mal, to Malachi about his book, Pray That You May Interpret, talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how you can, God can use you to interpret prayer language, your own personal private prayer language. So this is going out on the speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues Facebook page. So please feel free to share this, whether you're watching or you're listening to this, you're going to get so much out of this. But Malachi Talabi, he's an amazing friend of mine. He uh, lives in England and he's got the Prophetic People online community. He's an author, speaker, entrepreneur. He's an ordained minister. He loves the word of God. And more importantly, he loves to equip people in the w- power of the Holy Spirit. And so we're talking today about his book, Pray That You May Interpret. So please help me welcome Malachi Talabi to Adventures in the Spirit. Welcome, Malachi. Ooh, let's go, let's go, let's go. I am ready to dive into an adventure in the Spirit. I'm so glad to be on this podcast because Gerard is doing great things. I've seen you just expand and enlarge and all the guests you have on here. So I'm just happy to be back and I'm just loving it. I love being a part of what you're doing. So let's go. I'm ready. Let's go. So Malachi, since the last time we talked, what has God been up to in your life? Oh, so many things. I mean, um, we I've literally just moved house. And what God has been doing is showing me the power of holding fast to your confession. Hebrews 10, 23 talks about, you know, let us hold fast to our confession because he who promised is faithful. And what, what I did for the most part of Um, that journey was I just believed God but I didn't confess his word so I believed the scripture that he promised is faithful but actually the Bible says hold fast to your confession and I realized I wasn't confessing anything and it wasn't until I started confession it then led to possession so I actually obtained my promise from confessing I will have a double, double portion double portion double portion and then obviously I took action on that word and uh, I've got a new house. So many great things are happening right now because I believe this is a time where a lot of the seeds that we've been sowing are coming into manifestation. So God's just been blessing me um, in every area of my life. And I'm just happy for that, especially in, in this season where I do believe that it's harvest time for us as a body of Christ. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm excited. Well, I'm excited, too. Um, you've written extensively on speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. How did tongues help, should I say, activate you or draw you to where you are today with with what God has blessed you with? Okay, so tongues, uh, at the birth of the church, um, the first thing they did is they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. And with me, uh, that was one of the first things that happened to me. I I spoke in tongues. Uh, And for me, I went on a journey where I spoke in tongues and it was just this suddenly moment in church, I was praising God for all these great things that were happening to me. Uh, I said, thank you, Lord, for my my mom, my dad, my school exams. Thank you for me not getting getting in trouble. Thank you for the time that I asked a girl on a date. And she said, yeah, blah, 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 blah. But my language just changed. I was genuinely grateful. And my language just changed. And I spoke in tongues. But because it happened suddenly, no one touched me. This happened suddenly and spontaneously. I thought the Holy Spirit could only come upon me suddenly and spontaneously. So I didn't speak in tongues until I felt something. And it wasn't until I heard some teachings from someone called Dave Robinson and I did some research online and my pastor said something to me. He said, he said, Malachi, tongues is a language. You can grow and graduate as you practice a language. And I mean, it sounds good and it makes sense, but is it scriptural? 
I wasn't sure. So I found a scripture. It said, Paul said, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. So that meant that him blessing the Lord was a choice because he said, I will. But then Paul said, I will pray in tongues. And I thought, oh my goodness, if David can bless the Lord at all times because of his will and his choice, and Paul says, I will pray in the spirit. I realized that I didn't have to wait for the suddenly. I could by choice and faith submit my mouth to the Holy Spirit and begin to give voice to what he has put um, and to what he's put in my heart. And I just began to pray at tongues at will. And then all of a sudden I could see a connection between the time I spent in God's presence praying in the spirit and then what would happen in my natural realm. So for example, job opportunities, promotion, wisdom, favor. It was a sieve, wisdom, favor, opportunities, um, protection, encounters were all in the spirit realm, ready for me to give voice to those things. So like, it's almost like God has put all of these things in your spirit. And when you release these tongues out of your mouth, things are released into your life. So I started to see a connection between what the time I spent articulating God's will, his plan and his purpose from my mouth. And I started to see, oh my goodness, every time I speak in tongues for maybe a month, maybe a half an hour a day, an hour a day, a few months later, miracles would happen. Um, divine appointments. I would I would think about people and they would show up. I would think about people, they would phone me. I would ask God for um for a financial opportunity, and all of a sudden, um, my, my boss would say, Hey guys, um, there's gonna be about 20 hours of overtime this month. I was just praying about that. I and the way I would do it, how would I know it was tongues? Here's what would happen. I would do what most people would usually, they just pray in tongues, blah, 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 blah. but I would do what, what, what Paul says. I will pray in my understanding, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray with the spirit, I'll pray with the understanding. So what I would do is I would say, Lord, I need um, some more finances in my life. Um, it's hard, I don't have enough hours, I don't know if I need a new job, but please Lord, bring provision. And I would say that in English. And as I was saying that in English, it's all of a sudden, the whole, I would begin to pray in tongues. So I would say, I need more money. So me and the Holy Spirit were doing tag team prayer. Amen. He would take over, like in a wrestling match where you give the person a high five. It's like the Holy Spirit was like, high five, I'll take care of that. And then I would just pray for as long as the Holy Spirit led me. It could be 10 minutes. It could be 20 minutes. Sometimes it was an hour. But when I felt like it I, I, the Holy Spirit had finished, I'd be done. And then I would journal like I felt like I had an encounter. Something significant happened. And then within weeks, an answer would come. A way would be made. Um, and I, I'll give you a prime example. In this house that I'm um, sitting in right now, there was a room in the house and it was designed. My wife wanted it to be her office. And I decided, oh man, she's dreamt about this house for so long. Okay, just give it to her. But something told me, no, it's too big for an office. But I said, you know what, Lord, I'll surrender that. And I'll have, I'll have my own little man cave downstairs. But I said to my family, I said, here's what we're going to do. Let's just pray in tongues in this room. So our family, we touched the walls and we prayed in tongues. We prayed in tongues. After praying in tongues, um, we hadn't moved in yet. We, we left the house. And we got to the doorstep, shut the door, and outside, um, the next door neighbor was there. And they said, hello, um, you're new here. And I said, yeah, yeah, we're new, we're moving in. They said, you look familiar. And we said, okay, um, where do we know you from? And they said, we used to go to a church called Net Church. Malachi, I remember seeing you on the platform. You must have given a testimony. And we found out that the next door neighbors were my children's old Sunday school teachers. So they said, they said, okay, do you want to come into our house? You know, into, so we went to the next door neighbor's house and they showed us around the house. 
when we went upstairs to the same room that my wife wanted to, um, you know, be her office, they've got the similar house, but it's just same structure, but a, the different house. We went in there and we noticed that they had two rooms. We said, in our house, it's one room. They said, we put a separating wall. We turned both room, one room into two rooms. And basically that's what we did in our house. God gave us the wisdom to turn this one room into two rooms. So now um, my wife has her office and I have my man cave. And that's all because God released his wisdom. Two minutes before that happened, we were in our room praying in tongues. Then we step out of our house and now we have an idea from the Holy Spirit. One idea. Now, not only did it give my wife her space and me my space, actually what happened was it increased the property's value. So what we now bought was a four bedroom house. Um, sorry, two bedroom house, three bedroom house. Now it's a four bedroom house because of the addition that we've made. So our house has gone up in equity. And this is the essence of tongues and interpretation. It is extracting the wisdom of God. That's what interpretation really is. It's extracting the wisdom of God. Now there's a dimension of interpretation that is when you understand what you're praying, you and sometimes you understand you're, you're, you're praying worship unto God. Sometimes you can actually have a sense that you're, 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 you're adoring God in the spirit. But oftentimes there is a wisdom that you're articulating and that's what you're extracting the wisdom of God. I don't know if the people listening actually know there's a scripture that says, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my understanding is unfruitful. Or it also says in 1 Corinthians 14, he who prays in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. But it says no man understands him. So when you pray in tongues, your understanding is unfruitful. But when you stop praying in tongues, your understanding can become fruitful. Amen, I love that. Do you want the power of God to be evident in your life? Do you need to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Are you curious about the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues? And do you want it in your life? My wife and I have a free e-course available for you called the Baptism with the Holy Spirit, where you will learn the biblical truth and spiritual reality of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And you'll hear true stories of how people receive the promised gift. The videos in this e-course will expand your knowledge and understanding of the Holy Spirit baptism. You'll be drawn closer in relationship with the Holy Spirit and receive prayer and activation into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can also go through it with a small group of friends, a church class, or a discipleship group. You could download the accompanying PDF for each lesson and apply the principles to your life and take the action steps. Your faith will grow as you read the scriptures, watch the videos, and participate in the activation. The gift is for you. The gift is for today. The gift is to empower your spiritual life. We know that you will finish this course with the divine empowerment that comes through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So start your journey today. Go to charismacourses.com slash collections and click on Jared Lasky and enroll in the baptism of the Holy Spirit e-course. So you've got this book, Pray That You May Interpret. That you may interpret. I would love to hear how God led you to interpret your own tongues and encourage people who are curious about it how can they start flowing in interpreting tongues yes okay so that's the word it's definitely the word is flow it's about flow so for so long for many years i pray in tongues faithfully knowing like most people you should do this like you, you know you're being edified you know you're speaking the mysteries of God. You know that you're interceding in the spirit. You might be doing all the things that the Bible says, Jude 120, you're building yourself up and your most holy faith. You know all of these things are happening. But it wasn't enough for me. I said, no, Lord, there, there must be more. Like, there must be more. And I kept on reading 1 Corinthians 14 again and again and again and again until I got to a scripture. And it says, let he who prays in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, Paul was talking to the church. So he's talking about when you're in a church service, if someone is praying in an unknown tongue, they should pray that they may interpret. But in that scenario, I thought that if you're praying in church, someone else would interpret. But the scripture actually says, let he who prays in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. That's right. And that was my breakthrough because I realized that I can interpret my own tongue. And I want people who are listening 
to write that down. I can interpret my own tongue. The Bible says, let he who prays in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So what I did was I started to go on a journey of praying that I may interpret. And that's what I would say to everyone. I guarantee you that 90% of people who struggle with the interpretation of tongues struggle for two reasons. Number one, they don't actually pray that they may interpret. <laughs> just ask, yeah. They, don't, they just don't ask that they may interpret. And that is the biblical instruction. The biblical instruction is to pray that you may interpret. No one needs to lay hands on you. There's no profound thing that needs to happen. You just need to pray that you may interpret. And for so long, many years, I did not pray that I may interpret. And I want to tell people that I say this in my book, um, the interpretation of tongues and every nine, every one of the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit are inside out gifts. And what I mean by inside out gifts is that, that they work inside of the church and outside of the church. So you can pray that you may interpret inside church. You can prophesy inside church. You can work miracles inside church, but you can also pray that you may interpret outside of church and prophesy outside of church. These gifts work inside the church. Paul's talking about in the church, but they also work outside of the church. So what I did was I started to pursue the interpretation of tongues outside of the church in my own prayer time. And what began to happen was amazing. Because what a lot of people are going to realize is that <laughs> they are actually receiving interpretations, but they don't know that they've received interpretations. And when I start to explain some of these interpretations, what will happen is they're going to say, that's happened to me. And they're going to lock into it and then begin to go to a different dimension. But the one, one, one little side note or key is this. In the natural realm, I'm going to ask you some questions, now, Gerard. Like in the natural realm, uh -oh. if if there's um, if someone's going to interpret, what happens? Like let's say um, someone's preaching, there's going to be an interpretation. The speaker will speak first, but what will happen? Um, what what is it? What is it important for the interpreter to to know before they can interpret? Oh, great question. I think it it varies from place to place. But what are the protocols in the church? Yeah, but also just being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Maybe I'm not answering your yeah. question. No, so I mean, just but... I mean, just in normal language, like for in, in normal language. So let's just say you're speaking in Sweden and you've got an interpreter. What vital thing must your interpreter know to interpret um, the the Swedish, um, the the English to Swedish? They need to know the language. They need to know the language. An interpreter. So I got an A. Yeah, I you got, got an, an A. A. You got an A. Okay, they great. need to know the language. So. If you don't understand English, you can't interpret English. And um, um, if you're a Swedish interpreter, you can't interpret the language. You have to know the language. And this is the key to interpretation. If you know the language of the spirit, you can interpret tongues. And that's ultimately being able to hear the voice of God. And people struggle to interpret because they struggle to hear God's voice. Once you understand how God speaks, you can interpret tongues. That's it. Once you understand how God speaks, you can interpret tongues. That is it, point blank. And usually how God speaks to you normally is how you will receive an interpretation. Although there are many different ways you can inter um, receive an interpretation, it's by the same spirit that you, you hear God is the same way you interpret tongues. So anyone who says to me, oh, Malachi, you know, I can't interpret tongues because uh, I, I just can't. I'm like, it's usually the people who struggle to hear God's voice. So what I would say to people is spend time in God's presence and learn to hear, hear that still small voice. And once you start hearing the still small voice, you will start to operate in the interpretation of tongues because all you really have to do is this, pray in tongues, Pray that you may interpret and then be still. Like I said, when you speak in tongues, your understanding is unfruitful. When you stop speaking in tongues, your understanding can become fruitful. You see, the Bible says, get wisdom, but with all you're getting, get understanding. Yeah. Now, you notice that Paul says, we speak the wisdom of God in um, a mystery. But then also he says your understanding is unfruitful. Wisdom and understanding are the two fruits of an interpretation. 
So sometimes you get understanding about your situation more than you have ever, like, you, I, did, I don't understand what to do. You will get understanding. Or if you lack wisdom, you will get wisdom. What I believe is a lot of people are looking for these divine encounters. But actually, understanding is one of the biggest blessings you can receive. Remember, when Daniel was having this big warfare in the heavens and stuff like that, and what people talk about is the encounter, the prince of Persia and the angel and all of this, and da, 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 da. they talk about all the dramatic stuff, and they want the encounter. But what did the angel say to Daniel? He said, I have come that you might what? Understand. What? So all of this warfare that's going on in your life, all of this battle is about understanding. The devil doesn't want you to understand who you are and what God wants you to do or what you're called to. The devil doesn't want you to get understanding, but God does. But that understanding is so critical, God hides it in a language that you don't know. And if you're still and you're connected to the spirit and you be still, understanding will come. For so long, Gerard, I couldn't understand why I would relapse in like, let's say I'll go on a diet and I relapse, I relapse, I relapse. Oh, I'm going to eat healthy this eat healthy this week. Until I was reading Daniel chapter one and then all of a sudden he said that Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat. And Daniel went on this 10 day diet of water and raw foods. Now God said to me, usually people will talk about Daniel purpose in his heart. Daniel was determined, he was determined, he was disciplined. God said, no Malachi, this is not about discipline or anything like that. This is about purposing in your heart, which means that there are psychological and emotional attachments that you have to food. That if you first don't deal with these psychological and emotional attachments, then you will never be able to change your diet permanently. I was like, oh my goodness, he said, yes. Sometimes you're not eating because you're hungry. You're eating because you're depressed. You're eating because you're tired. You're eating because you're celebrating. But until you learn how to purpose in your heart and deal with these un, un, um, unseen things that are going on in your heart, you'll relapse and relapse and relapse. But where did that, what, what, what did God do? God was teaching, teaching me giving me understanding about how the human body works and how psychology works with food. There was another time I was reading about Daniel getting, um, Daniel had was given a portion of the king's um, meat, but he didn't want to eat the portion. And all of a sudden, this is a revelation. God said, portion, Malachi, let's talk about portion. He said, portions are so important. He says, whenever you go to the takeaway shop, Malachi, you always ask for a large portion. He said, Malachi, if you ask for large, you will be large. He said, now, from now on, I want you to get a medium. <laughs> I want you to decrease your portions. I was like, my goodness, I'm reading the word, Daniel chapter one, I'm learning about food psychology and portion control. Where do you see that in the Bible? You get that because there's the milk of the word, there's the meat of the word, and then there's mysteries. And as I begin to pray in tongues, mysteries began to unravel. As I faithfully said, Lord, I pray that I may interpret. And here's what people need to know. But I hope this is good. If this is good for you, just type now. This is good. I didn't know this was coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was coming. Why? Because I am an interpretation of some of your prayers. This wisdom, this podcast, Gerard linking with me and me linking up with Gerard, this, in, um, this Adventures in the Spirit podcast is an interpretation of your prayers. Why? Because you're getting understanding and you're getting wisdom. Listen, uh, like, it's all about wisdom and understanding. Uh, I've got in my book, I've got the pyramid of interpretation. And I say that a lot of people don't understand that the interpretation comes at different speeds. It comes at different yeah. speeds. So there's what I call, uh, like when you're ordering on Amazon, you can get something the next day. Yeah. You can get some, some things take three weeks. And, you know, when you're on, on, ordering something online, you can get an instant download. Now I say that 70% of the time, your interpretation will come maybe weeks after you prayed. What do you mean, Malachi? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, weeks in the form of wisdom and understanding. So there was a time, I think a few days ago, I was in my bedroom, um, I was praying. The music was going. And sometimes when you pray and your door's shut, 
the person on the other side of the door is thinking, what's going on in there? Because I can hear some weird sounds. And my, my wife, when I came out of the, 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 the prayer time, my wife said, what happened in there? What did God say to you? Like, I could hear your tongues were different. There was a shift. And what happened now? Give me the revelation. And I said to her, nothing happened. What, what do you mean? She said, no, no, no. What do you mean nothing happened? Something happened in there. I said, no, 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 no. Nothing happened. She goes, what do you mean? I said, oh, baby, don't you understand how this thing works? I said, this thing works like exercise. You see, when you're exercising, you're sweating and your heart's beating and you're, you're doing weights. That's not when you're getting fit. It's actually right. days afterwards that your body repairs itself, that you build muscle. You do not build muscle during exercise. During the exercise, you're tearing your, your muscles. It's only a few days and weeks later that you see your muscles have grown. So here's what I said to my wife. I said, tongues works the same way. 70% of the time, it's after I say, baby, you're going to see the revelation and the insight and the understanding a few weeks later when someone calls me to minister. Hey, Gerald calls me to be on his podcast. <laughs> so, so, so what I'm saying to you is 70% of the time, you're going to get what I call standard delivery. The revelation will come afterwards. You might be in a meeting and all of a sudden you start saying things you didn't even prepare. Where did that come from? That's an interpretation. Then I say um, about 20% of the time, it's going to be special delivery where you have a problem and you're, you're praying about it. And within seven days, it's like, okay, we are praying for our, our daughter. Uh, this is a situation. We're focused on it. And then God will give you revelation specific. Because a lot of people, when they're praying, they're not praying specifically. They're just praying in tongues. But when you take an issue or a picture or you hold, hold something to the Lord and you intercede over it, then God, within, within a 10 or 10 day phase, you start to see wisdom, understanding, or just breakthrough will come. And then instant download, like is that 10, five or 10% of the time where you are praying in tongues and all of a sudden revelation comes flowing straight out of your mouth. Boom. This happened to Oral Roberts. He built Oral Roberts University through praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, he got revelation. This happened to Andrew Womack. He's such a great teacher. If you read my book, there's a story. In fact, go online. That's how he built his, that's how he paid for his like million dollar Caris University. I think that's what it's called. It happened to Mike Murdoch. One time he was praying. It was like um, he was praying and, and then all of a sudden out of his mouth came the words, purge my ministry, purge my ministry. You know, um, that's an example. It happened to me, the first house I bought, we were praying specifically for a house. And I'm going to tell you a few different ways. I know we've got to wrap up soon, but I'm going to tell you a few different ways you can interpret it. But I'll go into one of them, which is sense it. It happened to me. I was praying. I just prayed in tongues. We were praying for a house, me and my wife, and we were going, but for the first time ever, all of a sudden, I started to laugh hysterically. I started to laugh hysterically. And I said, I said to my wife, baby, it's done. I said, she said, what do you mean? I said, we get in the house. <laughs> we get in the house, it's done. She says, how do you know? I said, I don't know, it's just done. I realized that my laugh was a sign of victory. Sometimes when you pray in tongues and you get, I call them the free, the free, the trinity of emotions, love, joy, or peace. You will have an oversensing joy. What does joy, what does joy look like in its full manifestation? It is laughter. So when I pray in tongues and I laugh, this doesn't happen all the time, but I'm laughing. I know that God is doing one of two things. He's giving me a sign of victory. Yeah. He's healing me because sometimes the healing is just coming. The joy of the Lord is healing you both physically and emotionally and ridding you of that, that spirit of depression. He's given you that garment of praise. So these are signs of victory. So one of the ways you can interpret your tongue is sense it. You can sense it. See, here's what I say. The, the interpretation of tongues is not described in the Bible, but it is implied. What do you mean? I say, there's nowhere in the Bible that it says, here's what the interpretation of tongues will look like. But I can tell you where it's implied. Give me, I'll give you an example. I say to, I say one of the um, ways you, one of the fruits of interpretation is revelation and wisdom. But how do I know that? 
Well, it's implied. How? Paul said this. He said, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than you all. This same Paul then said, you know, I, a fawn, of, fawn in the flesh was given to me because my abundance of revelation. So hold on a minute. This guy is speaking mysteries more than everyone, but he's getting more revelation than everyone. Then even in the Bible, Paul says this, I write to you this mystery. Or he says this, here is the mystery of godliness. He says, yeah. here is the mystery of lawlessness. Where did he get the mysteries? Praying in tongues and interpretation. So that's why I can tell you that tongues and interpretation, it may not be described, but it is implied. And you know why it's implied? Because it's a mystery. Tongues and interpretation is a mystery. Not just anyone's going to get their hands on it. This is precious stuff. And I believe that God has actually, with, with his mysteries, you have to pursue them. You have to pursue them. He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So let's just quickly, because we've got to go soon. Let's just quickly go into a few ways that you can interpret your tongue. Um, and these are the common ways. And one of them is there's an, actually an activation for this. Well, you can say it. So you can pray in tongues. You can pray in tongues and then pray in English afterwards. Yeah. Paul said this, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray with my understanding. That's actually an activation. If you practice this, if you pray in tongues and then by faith, pray in English and then pray in tongues and by faith, pray in English and pray in tongues and then by faith, pray in English. All of a sudden, you will start to feel an anointing on your English. Just like, you know, when you pray in tongues, you're like, bah, bah, do, 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 do. you're going through the motions. Then all of a sudden, it's like, so cool, rah, bah, 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 bah. the same way is, will happen, the same thing will happen when you're doing it in English. You might start with, Lord, you're good. Lord, you're almighty. After you pray in tongues, Lord, you're amazing. Oh, 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 Lord, breakthrough, is breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming. What happens? You step into the spirit. You connect with what is going on with heaven. You're dialed up and you just pulled something from the spirit. And if you ever, ever get an interpretation, please write it down and date it. Because this is going to be the testimony and the history you have with God to believe for bigger interpretations. I remember one time I was praying. Me and my wife were praying in the room. All of a sudden, prepare for the gold rush. Prepare for the gold rush. Oh my goodness. Stop. I was like, what? Prepare for the gold rush. I wrote it down. And then we realized that my wife was being coached by someone called Myron Golding. He's like a, he's actually a Christian. Um, he's a businessman, a highly paid um, public speaker and things like that. He, he hangs around with a lot of Christian business people, but he's a millionaire and she, he was her mentor, but then she went on one of his challenges and he, he did this whole challenge model, it transformed her business. But ultimately within four weeks of me saying, prepare for the gold rush, 10,000 pounds came into our lives through wisdom and understanding that God allowed us to implement in our business. It was just amazing. So now I realized, I realized that why sometimes we don't get an interpretation because sometimes it's better for us not to know what's happening because we will release it too early. Sometimes we were like, oh yes. And then we're now re re um, speaking out what the, the, the enemy can't attack what he doesn't know. And that's the power of sometimes a tongue will, will, will be delayed. So sometimes you're not getting interpretation. Just understand, sometimes it's on a need to know basis. You can't just every second, I'm going to interpret tongues. Sometimes you're not mature enough for the mystery. And Jesus, I heard this one day, Jesus won't share what you can't bear. <laughs> Jesus won't share what you can't bear. So as we grow and graduate, you, God will be able to trust us with more mysteries. But you can say the interpretation. You can see the interpretation. So again, if you are, if you are used to, used to hearing God in the visual capacity, then when you pray in tongues, you are just opening yourself up to more visionary experiences. Like if you're a seer or if you have the discerning of spirits and that commonly happens, then God will speak to you in the language that you know. You can sing the interpretation. Again, in the Bible, it says, I will sing in the spirit. I will sing in the understanding. So you've got see it, say it. 
sing it, sense it. You can scribe the interpretation, which means write it down. I even say that you can show the interpretation. Malika, where do you get that from? Well, hey, have you ever prayed in tongues and had your finger out like this and started to point and command and to, mm, 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 and you know you're either instructing angels or you are doing some spiritual warfare, but you know you're giving instructions. Have you ever prayed in tongues and just been, you're worshiping from the depths of your spirit. Have you ever prayed in tongues and banged the ground? And what, what's that saying? I want a breakthrough, Lord. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. So sometimes just observe what you're doing while you're praying in tongues. Guys, I know this is a lot and I don't want to overwhelm you. But let me just tell you this. If you are listening and you want to take anything from this, if you want to understand how to interpret your prayer language, know that God will always use what I call the little by little principle. So if you're going to move in this, forget about the Sid Roth encounters and all of those things. Just go with what God gives you. My first interpretation was a scripture. God gave me a script. I, I prayed in tongues. I said, Go, ra, ba, 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 ba. that's it. Lord, I pray I may interpret. And all, all that came out of my mouth was, Jesus is the light of the world. That was it. And I was so angry. For, what was that? Jesus is the light of the world. Why would you? What, what is that? So I think about two hours later, I went downstairs. And my daughter came running up to me and she said, Daddy, Jesus is the light of the world. I said, what? She said, Jesus is the light of the world. I said, why are you saying that? Oh, she said, oh, um, I just remembered it because last week in Sunday school, that's what they were teaching us. And I was like, oh my goodness, because there was no way she could have heard me. She wasn't around. I was all the way upstairs and she was watching TV and it was two hours later and she randomly said, Jesus is the light of the world. And God was just showing me, okay, this is possible. That was like, a, it was like a word of knowledge. And that's how I started praying that I may interpret. And it's just the little things, the little things. You have to document them and write them down. So I don't know. Does anyone want to do an activation? Anyone Absolutely. listening? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Go for it. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. According to 1 Corinthians 14, it says, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. So all we're going to do, and we're going to keep it short. We're going to pray in tongues. And then we're going to speak in English. And whatever comes out of your mouth, you are going to believe that's the interpretation. After that, I want you to read Hebrews 5.14 and understand that we have to actually exercise our senses. So this is something that needs to be continuous. You don't go to the gym on the first day and lift the heaviest weight. You might start with a small weight. And then before you know it, if you are faithful, you will reap a harvest of the interpretation of tongues to another dimension. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray in tongues for about, about 30 seconds to one minute. And then we're just going to speak out what we get. That's all I want you to do. And I want you to begin to practice this continuously. So let's, let's try and do it online right now. So, oh, we bless you, Holy Spirit. And pray that you give us utterance. And just a little thing here. Um, when you're doing this, just try to, you might pray that you may interpret beforehand. So you could say, Holy Spirit, we pray that we can flow in the interpretation of tongues. And we thank you for your joy and your grace and your peace in the name of Jesus. And then you're going to pray in tongues. And when you hear me click like that, you're just going to begin to speak in English. Okay. Oh, heavenly mysteries, heavenly mysteries, mysteries of the spirit, like a sebe, like the woman at the well. Mm, like the woman at the well. There is water for you to drink. There is a well of a well of revelation, well of revelation. And with this well of revelation, you will do well. You will be well and it will be well. All who are thirsty, come and drink. Come and drink. 
It is my good pleasure to give you the mysteries of the kingdom. They weren't hidden from you. They're hidden for you. Mm, come and find out what I've written of you. Come and find out what's in your book of life. Come and find out. Come, 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 come. Oh, do you know what, Joe? I can see Jesus. Oh, I feel like, I feel like there are people who feel like they need to earn revelation. Oh, I can see Jesus saying, this is all yours. I can't wait to show you what's behind the veil. I can't wait to show you things that will blow your mind. From today onwards, Lord, we just we just agree with you and we break that whole that whole thing about having to earn a revelation and having to 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 climb up the ladder of supernatural supernatural to 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 get revelation when it's your good pleasure to give us a kingdom. There are no supernatural celebrities. We can all drink of the spirit, guys. I pray that you're blessed, and I pray that you continue to pray that you may interpret. But I'm telling you. There are mysteries that God wants to give you. Keep on pursuing him. Amen, amen. I know that we've had people chatting. I try, sometimes I, I pull some of those comments up, sometimes I don't because, uh, you know, but I, I encourage chat. So if anybody has a testimony of the interpretation that they may have received, whether it's a Bible reference, whatever it is, please feel free to put that into the chat. I know that there's like kind of a delay sometimes uh, from, so it might take like a minute for people to start responding. But um, I want to encourage everybody to purchase Malachi's book, Pray That You May Interpret. It's available on your regional Amazon store. But also check out my book, newly published, The Baptism of the Holy Spirit, also available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and other places as ebook and as a paperback. So check out your local or online regional <laughs> I don't know. Amazon <laughs> store, Barnes and Noble store. I've had people asking from other countries if it's on a certain type of store. I'm like, all I know is Amazon. And I don't know <laughs> what where Amazon is or is not. But purchase Malachi Talab. I got a copy of his book right here. So the green, the green screen thing is kind of messing that up. So people can't see that in my hand. But it's a powerful book. It's a powerful book. I could not stop reading it. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it it's has the information that he shared today about the nine flows of the interpretation how to flow in that it shares testimonies so if you're in our speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues facebook page he's got links on there uh, of this book yeah. and all his other books so malachi what is the best way for people to get a hold of you uh, for more information so at the moment it is the prophetic people community online.com so yeah so it's there or the speaking in tongues group so that would great be so I hope I have that right. Propheticpeopleonline.com. Yeah, propheticpeopleonline.com. Propheticpeopleonline.com. Yes. Connect with Malachi, guys. It's it's a beautiful website, okay? It's a beautiful website. It's a great community of people. So please check that out. And um, there's a testimony that came in. As I started speaking in tongues, I have a vision of a heart, and it says God is love. Wow. Oh. Wow. That is why we do this, guys, right there. Yes. Wow. This is Thank you, love. Jesus. This is that is why we do what we do. Yes. Mary, Jesus loves you. God is love, and he's pouring out his love upon you in Jesus' name. So, guys, whether you are watching this live or you watch it on replay or you're listening to this on any podcast platform, share it with your friends. Share it with your friends. Another another testimony coming in. I heard grace and mercy. Mm. Grace and mercy. Jesus is love, grace, and mercy. This was a it's powerful brilliant. conversation with my friend Malachi Talabi. If you're not a member yet of Speaking in Tongues and Interpreting Tongues Facebook page, jump in. Mm. It's a great community. We've got all kinds of resources available there for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, learn how to grow in your spiritual gifts and interpret your own tongues. So please, again, check out, pray that you may interpret and also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Malachi's book and my book available on your local Amazon store. Malachi, thank you so much thank for being my special you. guest. Thank you so much for listening to Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky, a podcast that activates you to live the supernatural life. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and share it with your friends. Leave a five-star rate and review, which helps us reach more people with the love and power of the Holy Spirit and partner with us at firebornministries.com. 
And may you live your best spirit-empowered life and have your own adventures in the Holy Spirit.